Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and in this video we are going to cover some organic and biochemistry. Fun stuff, right? This is still just uh, introduction, introductory material, so it's not going to be explained in a lot of detail, but as with a lot of other things I've already covered, I will be explaining it in much greater detail in future videos. I just can't fit everything into one 10 minute video. Anyways, cells are basically just tiny little chemical factories. They're constantly working to break down, build, or modify compounds. Cells contain both organic compounds, which contain hydrogen and carbon in a chemical combination, and also inorganic compounds, which do not contain carbon and hydrogen in a chemical compound. This is not to say that inorganic compounds cannot contain carbon. For example, diamond is made of carbon. However, diamond is not a, an organic compound. Since pretty much all of the chemistry that happens within a cell is organic chemistry, that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. We're going to cover lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. Before I cover those things though, I'm just going to introduce you guys to a couple of functional groups that are found in organic molecules that will be important for you to know later on. We start off with hydroxyl groups. Um, you have an oxygen and a hydrogen. These are known as alcohols and they have the formula R, which stands for pretty much any other carbon, hydrogen group, whatever, OH, which is your hydroxyl group. An example would be ethanol or your typical alcohol, what's found in beer, vodka, tequila, whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you can see here, there are two carbons and your hydroxyl group. We next have carbonyl groups, which have the function C with a double bonded oxygen and two other groups on either side. You have ketones and aldehydes. The only difference between ketones and aldehydes is that one of the R groups has to be a hydrogen for an aldehyde. An example of a ketone would be acetone or nail polish remover. And an example of an aldehyde is acetaldehyde, which is believed to cause hangovers when you drink too much of this. You can see the double bonded oxygen and the hydrogen for the aldehyde and the double bonded oxygen and these two methyl groups for the ketone. Carboxyl groups have the chemical formula COOH. Um, these are known as carboxylic acids and the general structure is a C double bonded O and then you have a hydroxyl group here. That's very, it's very important to remember the difference between carboxyl and carbonyl groups. Um, an example of a carboxylic acid is acetic acid, also known as vinegar. You can see here you've got your carbon, double bonded oxygen, hydroxyl group right here. We next have amino group, which are called amines. These are a nitrogen, and bound to some other organic molecule. An example would be ethylamine and you can see here nitrogen to hydrogen. There are different classifications of amines. You have primary amines, secondary amines, and tertiary amines. This has to do with the number of hydrogens attached to the nitrogen. A primary amine has two hydrogens on the nitrogen. Secondary amine has one hydrogen and two R groups and a tertiary amine does not have any R hydrogens, instead it's all R groups. Next we have phosphates. You have a phosphorus, three oxygens, excuse me, four oxygens, one, 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 and a double bonded oxygen and this has a charge of negative two. This is what is called a polyatomic ion. But anyways, an example of a phosphate would be glucose 6 phosphate. Glucose is a carbohydrate, a sugar. Here you can see the phosphate attached to the sixth carbon right here. And the last one is a sulfhydryl group, are thiols or mercaptans. An example is butane thiol, four carbons, sulfur, hydrogen and thiols are sulfur-containing groups. Think of it as a sulfur alcohol. 